Welcome to Our Lady Victory as we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My friends, let's prepare ourselves to enter these sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon and peace. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
and let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the work of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our hearts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbors injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days set an enmity aside Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the most highest covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage and said, be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servant saw what had happened, They were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you have not had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. After hearing the day's readings in this gospel, I believe we have a real problem here. 
We just heard from Jesus making it clear that we are to forgive everyone. And now I'm going to try to give a homily based on the readings that are very straightforward and tell us how it is and what we are to do. The first reading started right out telling us that wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. And it goes on to say, forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Many times we have an eye for an eye mentality. We are commanded by God to forgive the sins of others so that our own sins may be forgiven. We pray this in the Our Father. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That is straightforward language. And yet, we must agree that when we take another look at it, we are seeing the fruits of not doing what we've heard. Look how much anger and hate there seems to be in our times. The incredible amount of video footage that displays on social media and our local news is overwhelming. Just as a scripture says, yet the sinner hugs them tight. Has sickness and disease suddenly taken over? Or is it really the nourishing anger against another? Anger is a spiritual cancer more deadly than any physical disease. Hate and vengeance poison our whole system and lead to eternal death. How do we ask for mercy and healing when we ourselves have nourished anger in our own hearts? This is complicated, but the question remains, are we or are we not going to strive to do as Christ asks us? The gospel today piles it on even more. The parable of the unforgiving servant shows the real reason we all need to receive and grant forgiveness and the fact that we are all in God's debt. The force of the parable becomes obvious when we realize the amount of money involved. A denarius was equivalent to a laborer's daily pay. A talent was worth about 6,000 denarii. So the king wrote off a debt of 60 million denarii, an amount so great that the servant could never have paid it off. This exaggeration holds the profound truth that the parable is meant to convey. The revelation of God's infinite mercy towards sinners, towards us. If the exaggeration were absent, the whole meaning of this parable would disappear. We also must remember it is not used to exaggerate the truth, but to express it. The servant's hardness of heart after being released from this huge debt is also very striking. But here, too, lies an insight into human ingratitude towards God and the severity with which we treat others. We find it difficult even to the tiny faults of others. His master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? And did Christ not do this exaggerated act as well for us? Did he, the sinless one, not only ask for our forgiveness, ask for us to be forgiven, but then he took on the punishment himself. It is said, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. 
This means that holding a grudge is toxic to the heart and can be harmful to the person holding it. It is better to forgive and let go of the poison of unforgiveness. Jesus, out of great love, knows this and is truly trying to save us from so much pain and anguish. Modern studies even show that unforgiveness and holding on to past hurts and grudges can turn into physical issues and in extreme cases cause death. This is a spiritual problem that can be solved only by spiritual response. Forgiveness becomes an act of charity and good, not only for them, but for us as well. We are not on this earth to live for ourselves. Did you know the fastest growing pagan worship ever in history is growing at a faster rate than Christianity? Called selfism. Selfism is the new God of the day. When we live for our selfish interest, the ability to forgive others becomes more and more difficult. Because now, others are in the way of me getting what I want. They become the problem of me having or not being comfortable or me not being able to sleep or eat or be on time or have fun or do what I want, to do what I want, what I want. You are the problem and I will not forgive you. Are we still falling for the lie of Satan, seeking to be independent of God, to be our own master? Sounds a whole lot like Adam and Eve all over again. They failed to remember that God was the source of their life. They were more focused on what would please themselves rather than the good of others. The biggest obstacle to people seeing unity is the sinfulness of the members of the church. The only good argument against Christianity is the Christians. What is the issue here? It's the sins of every member of the church that make the message of Jesus less credible and injure the mission given by Jesus to make disciples of all nations. It is crystal clear that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that there is a God, and we are not him. So in accepting this, we have the freedom to be able to choose to forgive, and in doing that, we become more in love with him and can love our neighbor. We not only get what we think we want, but even more. When forgiveness is sought out and offered, then the incredible loneliness and self-seeking desires grow dim and the light of truth becomes more vibrant. Life is worth living when we are sharing abundance with others. The wealth, the abundance we are talking about is not necessarily money or material. Remember the exaggerated numbers in the parable. It's not about having an enormous amount of money to change lives, but we do have an unending supply of forgiveness, which will bring about healing, joy, true happiness, and the peace that we all long for. These are the very ingredients that allow life for us allow us to live and enjoy this life now. This is what we really want and need. No honest person is going to say to another, I am truly happy to remain unforgiven. Along with all the hard things heard about unforgiveness and its tragedies, we also heard of the Lord being kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. He pardons all our iniquities, heals all our ills. He redeems our life from destruction, crowns us with kindness 
and compassion. Why are we here today? What are we asking for? Do we not see that we have the answer to the question and will we still ignore it? God has been merciful to each of us. Many times we have sinned gravely against God and we can never pay back our debt to him for turning away from him and embracing our sins. But yet God in his infinite mercy has chosen to forgive us when we genuinely repent. And having received and continue to receive his mercy and forgiveness, how can we refuse to forgive another? Someone else's whose sin against us cannot compare to our own sins against God. There's great hope and we can release it upon others or hold on to it and keep it bound. Who is it that we need to forgive? Let the words of Jesus burn in our hearts and minds. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. It is not that you forget what the other has done, but you remember more what God has done for you. You choose not to nurture anger and unforgiveness in your heart. Instead, you focus more on gratitude to God for his mercy. Today is the day, now is the time. The joy and promises of Jesus are ready for you to receive. Forgive yourself, forgive others. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of faith, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the precious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken in the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess from baptism the forgiveness of sins. The Lord is kind and merciful, as we sing in our psalm today. Let us appeal to God's mercy and kindness and bring to mind our needs and the needs of others. For the Holy Catholic Church, may she be a reconciling church that brings healing to penitence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all Christian churches may reconcile in a spirit of humility and that Christians everywhere may collaborate to proclaim the good news we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority among nations, may they exercise that authority in the spirit of diplomacy to diffuse global tensions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for our catechists who teach the faith, may they be strengthened by your gifts to teach by word and by example the truth that comes from you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For sincerity and the sign of peace we will give to one another during this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Otto Schultz and Al Klatt, and for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs listed in our parish intention book, and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Kind and merciful Father, slow to anger and rich in compassion, grant our petitions. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
and pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and your kindness, accept these, your servants' offerings, that which each is offered to the honor of your name, may serve, may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and ever we give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, in all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, for the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have bought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we attain an inheritance for your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence are life and failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Britain, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, 
and the entire people you gain for your own. Listen, grace to the prayers of this family whom summoned before you. Your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, all who are pleasing for you with their passion in this life, give kind of minutes to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullest of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the sake of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace you grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be freed from sin and saved from all distress as we wait the blessed hope at the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but in the faith of your church, and in grace you grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <clears throat> And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
May the working of the he- this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, that effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning I want to acknowledge two groups. The first is the youth leadership team from the Diocese of Victoria. They are a group of young people, high schoolers, that come together for prayer and retreat and training to do peer-to-peer ministry throughout the diocese. And so they are joining us this morning here. And a special group is our catechists, our religion teachers, our instructors of the faith, those that work both in our Catholic school and also in our religious education program every Wednesday nights. Many of them have their red shirts on today at Mass as they celebrate this catechetical Sunday. Particularly thank you to Monica Flores, who is our Director of Religious Education here, and Mr. Principal Matias, Justin Matias, who's our principal at the school. Those two lead and direct and guide with my assistants and deacons input uh, the spiritual lives and formation of our children. And so for them and for all of our catechists, thank you for hearing the call to serve and offering your time in that service. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Master. Thanks be to God.